Welcome to That's Good Sports, I'm Brandon Perna. Uh, week 17 in the NFL got pretty crazy, so buckle up. Jesus, not literally, Jimmy. Wait, is that why Troy Aikman was crying? For me, 2023 ended the same way 2022 ended, with absolutely no hope for my football team. The Broncos couldn't even stay alive into 2024 despite winning. So the Broncos, the Bengals, the Raiders, the Giants all eliminated, also pretty much ending the glorious year of the backup. Wait, what's that? What about Joe Flacco and Gardner Minshew? Those are bona fide starters, not backups. Lamar Jackson dropped the Dolphins off at SeaWorld. The Steelers are still alive. Everyone in the AFC South is still alive, except for the Titans. That ass clown David Tepper's team gave the Bears the first pick and Jordan Love has the pack in a win and they're in situation. Today, I'm gonna break down the real winners and real losers from week 17 right after the Blop 10 plays. Blop 10? The Dolphins getting a taste of their own medicine. Oh, running up the score with the backup isn't so funny now, is it Miami? Tyler Huntley and Mike White both salting the wounds this season. Number nine, the 49ers got to watch themselves clinch home field advantage on Mike Silver's phone. If I'm YouTube TV, I'm turning this into an ad immediately. Stream the game while you watch the other team during your game. And somehow the screen the rest of the team watched on was barely bigger than that phone. Go, go, go. go get his ass! Oh, oh, yeah! Yeah! Flop eight. Not just one, but two touchdowns for Julio Jones, who hasn't visited the end zone twice in one game since 2020. And of course, in classic Julio fashion, his performance will be forgotten because his team blew a... A late lead in a big game. Blop seven, Najee Harris buried Reek Woolen with a biblical stiff arm. Ooh, get out of my way, little boy. Ooh, I'll keep running on you. And of course, that helped Mike Tomlin go over 500 once again, meaning the world will not end in 2024. Six, this punt return from the end zone, which was probably not the wisest decision. I get it though, because on the 0.01% chance you take that to the house, it's a highlight forever. The most shocking part of this play is that it was actually Richie James, not Kadarius Tony. In 2022, only three of 952 punts were returned from the end zone. Block five, Justin Fields and this sack escape, which I believe is the play that prompted Bears fans to chant, which just so happened to take place as the Panthers were clinching the second straight number one overall pick for the Bears. Number four, just the tippers. Fingertip catches, one by Saints tight end Jawan Johnson, and another big time grab from George, just the pickings. Blop three, Isaiah likely spears the ball with one hand on fourth and seven and takes it all the way for a tutty. One of two on the day for him. The Ravens are the first team to lose their all pro tight end and somehow get better at the position. First seed in the AFC, not just likely, it's certain, baby. Number two, the Rams didn't recover any fumbles against the Giants, unless you count this from Kyron Williams' mom, who wrestled her son's touchdown ball away from a Giants fan. If you wanna wear a Saquon Barkley jersey, you've gotta show better ball security than that. Also, you're an asshole, but not as big as an asshole as Blop One, the whiny baby Panthers owner, David Tepper. It's incredible that as soon as Dan Snyder gets pushed out of the league, another douche steps in and takes his place, doing something that even Snyder would have thought was too far. And I say that full on knowing Snyder let raw sewage leak on his fans, but he'd never throw a drink in their face. If Tepper is doing this shit in public, who knows what's going on behind closed doors? Your team is dead last, David, and officially gave the first overall pick to the Bears. That is exactly what you deserve. And I might have to make a fuck the David Tepper coffee bean next. Watching the Jags shut your team out? No offense to all the Panthers players, okay? I love and respect you guys. But watching them shut your team out with an opposing quarterback named CJ Beathard throwing no touchdowns and for less than 200 yards is what I hope happens to David Tepper for the rest of eternity. 
Blob Zero? Captain Kirko who ripped off his shirt and did the skull chant in front of a fired up crowd in Minnesota on Sunday Night Football. Sure, they lost bad. Inserted Nick Mullins back into the lineup after halftime. Would have looked better with an injured Kirk Cousins, but if this is the last look that Vikings fans get at Kirk Cousins before impending free agency, it is a very sexy one. Those Viking skulls will be full of shirtless cousins in their spank bank. And of course, my F the refs call of the week already went to Brad Adams and the officiating crew from the Lions Cowboys game, benchwarmerbrew.com if you want to get your bag of beans. And yes, I did a full video video on that, so please check it out, Lions fans. If I were to touch on one thing from that game, it would be that Jared Goff really put the off in Goff, and CeeDee Lamb is... He was a monster with 227 receiving yards, breaking Michael Irvin single season records and catches and yards in that game. Winners, spoiled ass Packers fans. They started 2023 on New Year's Day with a big win over the Vikings, ended 2023 with a big win over the Vikings. Fans started the year with tempered expectations, but now are a win over the Chicago Bears from a playoff berth. Jordan Love in his first year starting already setting Chicago franchise records. Love trumped score though, to the tune of 256 yards, three passing TDs, and a skull-crushing rushing touchdown. Honestly, I'm envious of the deal the Packers made with Satan. They will always have a Hall of Fame QB, but they'll never win more than one Super Bowl with that QB. If this were 2001, I'd be giving my uh, big pimpin' award to Jordan Love, considering he's keeping them hoes alive. Winning! Cardinals and Giants. Two teams with nothing to play for, each taking playoff teams down to the wire. Now the Giants lost with the off-the-couch kicker and Mason Crosby, but the Red Bird Gang shocks the Green Bird Gang, helping Bang Bang Niners Gang secure the number one spot in the NFC. In gang on gang violence, the cards raise the red bandana in victory. Credit the cards for indeed having that you have fire in your gut. Mm, fire in their gut. Winning coach Jonathan Gannon won his fourth game of the year for Arizona, possibly costing himself Marvin Harrison, beating his old team, the Eagles, in a game that Philly absolutely needed to keep pace with the Niners. Gannon got scorched for his play calling as defensive coordinator in Super Bowl 57, but guess what? The Eagles' defense has taken a huge step back without him. His cards dropped 35 against Phillies D, which is ranked 25th in points allowed this season after they finished top 10 with Gannon. Losers, the Philly run D, giving up 228 rushing yards, 128 coming from James Conner and Michael Carter having a surprising 61 and an on-field murder. Kyler Murray threw three touchdowns and to make matters worse, the Cardinals didn't punt a single time in this game. Now the Eagles may have run the perfect fake tush push, but ultimately, they were the ones who took it up the, you know what, the rectal anus dirty starfish butthole. That was awesome. <laughs> this game had Eagles fans asking one question. Yeah, just, just not really well. The Kirk Cousins Award gifted to the quarterback that no matter what he did, his team lost does go to Terod Taylor. Opposite to Rod Taylor was Stafford, who was the only quarterback this week to throw multiple picks and still win. In a losing effort for the Giants, Taylor hit 319 passing yards, one touchdown, and 40 yards on the ground, including a 31-yard run late in the fourth quarter that set up Mason Crosby for what could have been the game-winning field goal. Now, I cannot imagine the pressure to Rod Taylor must have felt coming in for a bench the Italian, a quarterback folk hero in the most Italian state in the union, but he gave his his team a shot to win. Fuck, sorry, I shouldn't I shouldn't say shot when I'm talking about Terod Taylor. Taylor got just 39 yards of help from Saquon Barkley, but managed to spread the ball out to eight different Giants receivers, most notably this 80-yard TD pass of beauty to Darius Slayton. My Boomer Award, not what you think, goes to Wandale Robinson for this rumbling, stumbling, and more stumbling, some more, he's still stumbling, touchdown. Winning? You don't want to play this team in the playoffs? 
team, the Rams, who clinched a playoff spot with their win over the Giants. Now, a year ago, the Rams defended their Super Bowl title with just five wins, the least of any reigning Super Bowl champion, but with a healthy Matty Stafford, they are locked into the playoffs at nine and seven and have as much experience in the postseason as anyone else in the NFC. Kyron Williams hit a thousand yards rushing. Cooper Cup is looking like his old self and with 118 yards against the Giants, Puka Nakua is probably a shoe in to break the rookie receiving record later this week. They're an exciting team. After starting the season three and six, they're quietly as hot as anyone in the NFL, winning six of their last seven. Unfortunately, for the viewing public, they are not locked into the sixth seed, and that means we likely won't be able to get a look at Carson Wentz versus Sam Darnold next week. Winners, the terrorists. Sean McDermott is 4-0 since converting the Mafia to Al-Qaeda, and now other terror groups are actively seeking his support in hopes of changing their fortunes. The Patriots return the opening kick for a touchdown, so Jalen Rieger is officially no longer a bust. New England has the third overall pick right now, but Washington, who Bill Belichick is linked to, has the number two pick, and I hope he goes to the commanders and drafts the quarterback New England wants. Josh Allen is a fucking madman and is now tied with Jalen Hurts for the second most rushing TDs on the season at 15. That's not just for QBs, that's for all players. Allen and Hurts have more rushing touchdowns this year than run CMC. Only Raheem Mostert has more at 18. Rasul Douglas, who leads the Bills in picks, now got a key pick six, taking advantage of a struggling Abelia Zappi, who started the day going three of nine with three interceptions, or as I call it, perfect balance. Three picks, three completions, and three incompletions. Winning stat line, Tyler Algier having one reception for 75 yards and a TD in a snow game. I could have given Taylor Heineke the losing quarterback award this week, 10 to 19 with three picks, but I'm gonna make fun of the Falcons for something else in a minute. If you were to tell me one team would have had three rushing touchdowns and 192 rushing yards in this game, I would have guessed it was the Falcons, but it was the Bears led by Khalil Herbert who had his second straight 100 yard rushing game. Every team not named the Dolphins who had 100 yard rusher this week won. Winning most on brand play of 2023, the near kick six by the Falcons. D. Alford catches the field goal attempt at the negative 9.9 yard line, returns it roughly 100 yards before getting tripped up and not scoring. As close as you can get without actually succeeding, that is the Falcons. That play ended the half, so of course Atlanta couldn't do anything with it. Winning receiver in the snow, DJ Moore, who helped Bears fans fall in love with Justin Fields making a truly beautiful catch in this game. The kind of ball tracking skills I've only seen a dog's nose perform more effectively. Moore had 159 yards and a TD. Uh, accounting for roughly two thirds of all Fields passing yards in this game. Losers, the Saints. Now the Saints won, Taysom Hill caught a touchdown, and I simply couldn't give a shit about this team knowing that even though they just beat the Buccaneers, that it doesn't matter because the Buccaneers play the Panthers next week, and unless David Tepper is out on the field throwing beer in the Bucks' faces, they win, and they are in, and they will definitely win. Winning quarterback Lamar Jackson ran away with what's about to be his second career MVP eviscerating the Dolphins in the same week that Lamar was criticized for not being quarterbacky enough, which we all know is just code for quite. Yeah, Lamar's good, but something about Flacco that I miss. I can't, <laughs> I can't quite put my finger on it. Jackson was literally perfect against the Dolphins, putting up a passer rating of 158.3 and throwing five touchdowns, AKA the Jackson Five, the first time he's done that since week 15 of 2019, when he did, of course, take home MVP number one. He's close to number two, but not as close to number two as he was in 2021. Between Mike Florio and his dumb prediction a week ago and the quarterbacky comment this week, I think it's very apparent that the Ravens just need to get totally shit on by some random media member every week for the rest of the season if they want to win the Super Bowl. 
I do find it strange that the two quarterbacks that are playing the best in the NFL at this very moment are Lamar Jackson and of course Joe Flacco. That 2018 Ravens QB room had a Super Bowl MVP, a league MVP, and a rookie of the year slash Heisman winner in RG3. Flacco's eliteness rubbed off on all of them. Most injured, the Dolphins. They have the absolute worst health at exactly the wrong time. They lost edge rusher Jalen Phillips uh, months ago. Guard Robert Hunt, running back Raheem Mostert, and Jalen Waddle weren't playing in this game. And then they lose Bradley Chubb to a torn ACL with just minutes remaining. Corner Xavier Howard hurt his ankle in the first quarter after getting exposed as the fraud fins in what was probably the biggest game of the regular season for them. They're quite literally limping into the playoffs and they're going to have to battle it out with the Bills next week for a chance to hold on to their spot atop the AFC East. Losing quarterback? The Broncos. All of them. Somehow both Russell Wilson and Jarrett Stidham lost. A season long achievement, concluding with the Jarrett Stidham experience. Now I said the worst thing that could happen would be Stidham playing exactly like Russell Wilson statistically. Welp, here's their box scores against the Chargers this season. Oh God, while Denver was boring the Chargers to death in a victory, both the Chiefs and Steelers won, which ended Denver's playoff hopes for the eighth consecutive year following their win in Super Bowl 50. And since that game, not much has changed. We're still stuck in quarterback purgatory. We didn't suck hard enough to have a shot at drafting one of the top college QBs, and the Russ contract is going to make fielding a team difficult, let alone fielding a winning team. Getting our first winning season since 2016 would feel good, but heading into the offseason, it does kind of feel like we're going to be right back at square one. That said, winning blocks go to Broncos fullback Michael Burton, who helped spring the only exciting play in this game. Watch as Michael Burton hit a block at the line of scrimmage and then gets all the way downfield to spring the final block for Lil Hump and his 55-yard touchdown. Losing stat, the Chiefs have dropped 40 passes this year, the most in the NFL this season. It's so bad that even former Chiefs receivers are dropping fucking easy touchdowns. And they had another big one in this game from MVS that cost them a third down. Out of all the wide receivers on the roster, the one Mahomes trusts the most is rookie Rashi Rice, who had five grabs for 127 yards in the win against the Bengals as KC clinched the AFC West for whatever straight years. Losing trash talker, Jamar Chase. Earlier in the week, Jamar Chase said this. What stands out about that secondary? If I'm being honest, nothing. It's not really like they got a Jalen Ramsey on these squads. Which is a bold thing to say for a wide receiver who's got his backup QB throwing him the ball. No offense to Jake Browning, but your success entirely depends on your QB's ability to get you the ball. It's like saying your neighbor's Prius is a piece of shit, even though it runs and gets him to work every day, and you take the bus to work because your car doesn't exist. Who took the bus? It's still at the dealership, and you might be able to afford it one day once you get your credit score higher than the 41 yards Chase had in this game. And a little, uh, yeah, chat. Wishing each other Happy New Year. I don't think that's what they were actually saying to each other, Jim. Loser, Rich Eisen's take on the fumble touchback rule. No offense, Rich. I hate this rule. This rule has to change. In an otherwise terrific game, CeeDee Lamb fumbled through the end zone on Saturday night against the Lions. And sure, that was bad for the Cowboys, who ultimately won the game. But it was worse for everyone on Twitter who had to endure the worst debate in all of football, the touchback rule. A lot of people are calling this the worst rule in football. Most notably, the usually wise Rich Eisen. And I say usually because he's just dead wrong about this. And he's using his platform to try and change it. In an era where just about every rule from pass interference to roughing the passer is geared to help the offense score points, I'm glad there's at least one kind of quirky rule that goes in the defense's favor. If you don't like that a fumble through the end zone results in a touchback, I have a very easy solution for you. Don't fucking fumble there! It brings a little wrinkle and some much needed risk on the offense's part. 
And here's how I know it's a good rule. Even C.D. Lamb agrees with it. Winning team, the San Francisco Purdy's. Brock Purdy set a 49ers record, franchise record for passing yards in a single season. While he may have thrown a potential MVP away last week, this achievement does in fact prove that he's a better QB than Joe Montana or Steve Young ever was. In just 16 games, Purdy racked up 4,280 yards. Uh, now that I think of it, that's a pretty easy record <laughs> for one of the most storied franchises in the NFL. More than anything, it shows how reactionary people are after Purdy's bad game against the best team in the NFL was last week. We tend to write players off, especially when they have a bad showing in front of a national audience. Against the Commanders, he hit on 22 of his 28 passes for 230 yards and a pair of touchdowns, including a great improv play where he finally found Brandon Ayuk in the back of the end zone after directing Ayuk back across the back of the end zone. That's some veteran QB shit right there. Winning duo running backs Najee Harris and Jalen Warren who are officially playing Steelers football. Just three yards shy of 200 combined from the pair, gashing the Raiders run defense for a buck 97, three rushing touchdowns combined. And it wasn't just yards. They assaulted the Seahawks defense as they ran. It was like a three hour angry run from the tandem. If the monster has two heads, how do you stop it? Losing team, the Raiders, who had a good shot to make the playoffs if they could have beaten the Colts. I'm not sure anyone outside of Las Vegas or Indiana was actually watching this game because it was sandwiched between nine other games on red zone but the Raiders came out flat after two incredible AFC West victories back to back and I know the score says they're, they only lost by three, but this game wasn't really close. In a must-win game, Max Crosby has zero sacks and zero quarterback hits. A big reason Gardner Minshew was averaging nearly 10 yards every time he dropped back. And yes, this does mean that with a win next week against the Texans, we finally will be able to see what we've spent five years longing for a Gardner Minshew playoff start. Messiest division, the AFC South. The Jags, Colts, and Texans are all at nine and seven and could all make the playoffs. The Texans and Jags each scored exactly 26 points. And it's a shame that the Titans scored three because we could have had two AFC South teams winning 26 to zero. Will Anderson notched two sacks in this game for the Texans, giving him seven on the season, setting a franchise rookie record. More than JJ Watt, more than Mario Williams, and of course, more than Jadavia. And clowny. Finally, all the way back on Thursday, the Browns made history, and it's all because of one man, his eliteness, Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco helped the Browns clinch a playoff spot after ripping his fourth straight 300-yard passing game, most by a Browns quarterback since the Browns returned to Cleveland in 99. Joe houdini the nastiest play fake we have ever seen, ever, ever. I'm going to call him the vet because he made that dog's balls disappear. Joe Flacco got so tired of kicking ass this last month, he almost fell asleep in prime time. I don't know about that. I, I, I can't believe that. I'm sure my eyes, who knows? Go get some rest, Sleepy Joe. Go get some rest. Thanks for watching week 17, winners and losers. Only one more regular season slew of games left. Please subscribe here on YouTube and make sure you watch some other stuff, preferably my videos.